I have been using the iPhone 11 Pro Max for almost two months now, and here we are concluding the review in today's video. Now, I know it's really easy for every one of us to say that the iPhone 11 Pro Max isn't a phone that's worth buying because of its expensive price tag, and whereby Android phones these days can really offer great features for a much cheaper price. But that doesn't mean that the iPhone 11 Pro Max doesn't have its own value as a pro phone. So in today's video, I'm going to tell you about my thoughts after using the iPhone 11 Pro Max for two months and conclude whether it's still a pro phone. One of the things that Apple has always focused on iPhones has always been about content creation. So there are a couple of things that Apple has done right. The Super Retina XDR display, for instance, has the most accurate colors I've ever seen on a smartphone display that maxes out at 800 nits brightness for HDR content. The Dolby Atmos certified stereo speakers are really loud and have a realistic spatial audio effect. And most importantly, the new 12 megapixel triple camera system is so good at taking photos that switching between lenses doesn't cause any color shifts that you would usually find on most flagships. However, there's two things that I wish that the iPhone 11 Pro Max had as a pro device. And first of all, it would be USB-C. I mean, it just makes sense, doesn't it? Even the new iPad Pros already had USB-C for easy file transfers and charging. And I think the iPhone 11 Pro Max really deserved to have a USB-C port so that I could transfer files easily through a thumb drive. And the second feature, <laughs> I know you guys are gonna expect me saying that it needs to have a high refresh rate display, but no, it's still related to its USB-C port, but that is fast charging. I mean, having 18 watts is really good. It's really much better than the older iPhones, but I mean, let's face it, there are a lot more faster charging protocols out there. And since the iPhone uses the standard USB power delivery protocol, there's no reason why Apple should not um, have more power input for the iPhone 11 Pro Max to make it a pro device to make it charge faster. Coming from the iPhone XS Max, the iPhone 11 Pro Max certainly doesn't feel like a huge design update. Apart from the fact that the frosted glass is a rather welcoming material, I would like to see more on future phones as it doesn't attract fingerprints. Apple has once again emphasized the strength of the glass it uses on the display, which I can testify as my unit sustained a bad drop during a photoshoot session. Due to my negligence of not putting on a screen protector, it caused a pretty bad scratch, but fortunately, no cracks. I'm just pretty impressed that they aren't too visible when I'm using it. iOS 13 has gone through several updates since I started this review. I encountered mostly UI issues during the review period and it still happens occasionally, which can be annoying. But considering the improvements that it has over iOS 12 and the iPhone 11 Pro's faster hardware, you tend to forgive those shortcomings over time. For instance, Face ID works faster and more precise than it is on the iPhone XS Max. Dark mode helps conserve power and soothes your eyes when you're using the device in dim lighting. Improved privacy controls keeps users well informed of apps that are using their data. And finally, two big updates, Apple Arcade and Apple TV+, Plus, which are services that Apple is betting hard on to ensure it has an advantage over others. The iPhone 11 Pro Max's camera isn't the best ranked in the charts, but I would suggest you look past that because this is a great camera and I've been using it to take some amazing photos. But before that, let's do a little recap on the camera hardware. All three cameras have an effective resolution of 12 megapixels. The main wide angle lens has an f1.8 aperture, while the ultra wide angle lens has an f2.4, and the telephoto lens gets an improved f2.0 aperture from the 10s Max's f2.4. Optical stabilization is only available on the wide angle and telephoto lens. However, you do get electronic stabilization on the ultra wide lens. And that's okay considering that most users wouldn't take low light shots with it. Like I said in the beginning, the one thing that pro users will absolutely love is the consistency of the colors when switching between lenses. And that is extremely important when it comes to accurately framing your shots, whether it is taking a photo or video. I enjoyed some long overdue improvements on the camera app that's made specifically for the new iPhones. I can switch aspect ratios, video resolution, and frame rates all within the camera interface. I'm also totally fine with night mode only appearing when the camera thinks it is required. But what I really wish Apple could include is raw capture and manual image controls, because it simply is better than having to access these features on a third party app. Otherwise, the iPhone 11 Pro Max takes phenomenally beautiful shots when put to the test. The main wide angle lens produced naturally saturated shots without over sharpening details. Panoramic shots look stunning. 
and night mode is so impressive that we managed to capture a decent Milky Way image. The ultra wide angle lens may lack hardware stabilization and the ability to use night mode, but I am still pretty impressed with the image quality in low light as it maintains a decent amount of detail with very minimal noise levels. Colors also doesn't look washed out like you find on other flagships. With a larger aperture, the telephoto lens can now take better low light photos compared to its predecessor. The results are surprisingly close to the main camera, which has less noise and looks really great when it comes to details. Taking selfies with the iPhone 11 Pro Max is now better with a new 12 megapixel f2.2 sensor. This also results in better portrait lighting pictures where it can trace faces better and produce a more natural bokeh. Best of all, the front camera now supports 4K video recording at 60 frames per second and it is very, very stable. As you can see, I'm not using a gimbal at all, I'm just holding it with my hands and you can see the great cinematic stabilization that Apple has done on the front camera. And oh, let's not forget about slow feed, which is a feature that, you know, is fun, but something that you might not use every day. On a single charge, the iPhone 11 Pro Max has no sweat in lasting a day with a heavy 5-hour screen on time. Even with that kind of usage, I'll only need to charge it when I'm halfway through the next working day. That's all thanks to the larger 3969mAh battery and the A13 Bionic chip's power efficiency. This is the best battery life that I've ever experienced on an iPhone. Over the past two months, I have been using both the iPhone 11 and 11 Pro Max and I have to agree with most reviewers out there that the iPhone 11 is more than sufficient for most users who wants a new iPhone because it has the same firepower as the 11 Pro Max minus the telephoto lens and a less superior display, but it still looks good as well. However, if you're someone who does a lot of content creation workflow on the phone, then you should definitely go for the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Though I still don't agree with Apple on why they would want to charge such a premium over the 11 for the same amount of storage. And I really think Apple should really stop offering 64 gigabytes as the base storage for their iPhones. So I wouldn't recommend you purchase the iPhone 11 Pro Max on full price, but rather take advantage of the subsidies from telcos where you can get cheaper monthly installments or probably a subsidized contract plan. So yeah, that's it for my review of the iPhone 11 Pro Max up to two months. It's a really great phone that I like apart from its expensive price tag. So stay tuned for more on KL Gadget TV. Be sure to subscribe to us for more videos coming right up. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.